So I'm happy to invite up here um, the representatives from YouTube um, and Google. It's Rebecca Moore, sitting here, who's manager for Google Earth Outreach, and Steve Grohl, who's head of news and politics at, uh, at YouTube. And I'd like to pass the floor to, to you, Rebecca, first. Thanks very much. Uh, on behalf of Google, we'd like to acknowledge the Danish government and particularly the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for their leadership in creating an unprecedented level of openness and engagement with the general public by virtue of using new technology. So thank you. Um, and it's an honor to work with you. Today, uh, in collaboration with the Danish government, we're launching a new series of narrated Google Earth tours and layers related to climate change with the goal of making climate information much more accessible and understandable to the general public. This series brings together scientific information about our world under a changing climate, including temperature and precipitation projections under a range of emission scenarios. Um, we'll also include issues, the rising risks to food security, water stress, coastal zones, and more. Over the coming weeks, leading up to COP15, we will continue to launch additional tours and layers related to climate impacts, adaptation, and solutions, including actual on-the-ground case studies of actions by NGOs and local communities to respond to this challenge. In this slide, you can see the three tours that we are launching today that are available now related to climate change an introduction by Al Gore, and then the high and low emission scenarios, a visualization of that under using IPCC data. In addition, we have a link to UNFCC data provided under the Kyoto Protocol of actual emissions measured in countries that ratified the Kyoto Protocol. So just to, just to close, at Google we believe that Technology can be a catalyst for education and action, and this project is a good example. For the average person, the discussions of carbon emissions can seem very abstract, and our goal is to make this vivid, concrete, and comprehensible uh, to, uh, to everyone. We all have a role to play in confronting climate change, and we invite citizens around the world to engage with these layers, immerse yourself in this visualization, and use the resources to learn, to care, and then get involved. We'll now view a short version of our introductory video narrated by Al Gore called Confronting Climate Change. Human activities like deforestation and burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas, are changing our climate in ways that pose increasing threats to human well-being in both developing and industrialized nations. The good news is that we can still avoid the most severe impacts of global warming by reducing our emissions of heat-trapping gases and halting and reversing deforestation. However, as we work to reduce these emissions of global warming pollution by investing in renewable energy, and by protecting our forests and soils, we must also begin to prepare for the changes already coming by working to better understand the risks and integrating these needs into our development plan. If we were not to dramatically reduce our emissions, the global average temperature is expected to rise as much as four or more degrees Celsius by the end of this century, and that would cause severe damage to natural systems and to human health and well-being. In addition, the destabilization and extensive melting of the Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheets, shown here as the number of days of Greenland ice sheet melting, has increased dramatically since 1979, could cause global sea level to rise between 4 and 12 meters, with each meter causing roughly another 100 million refugees. During these tours, you will also learn about the range of available solutions. You will visualize a new world of renewable energy and see what individuals and communities around the world are doing to both reduce their carbon footprint and adapt to their changing climates. The challenge is huge and time is short, but together we can solve it.
Thank you so much, Rebecca. I'll pass the floor to Stephen. Great. Well, thanks, everybody. My name is Steve Grove. I head up the news and politics team at YouTube. It's interesting seeing Google Earth used in this way, uh, data educating people about the impacts of climate change. On YouTube, it's people educating people about the impacts of climate change. Uh, YouTube, as you probably all know, is the world's largest video sharing site. Uh, every day, hundreds of millions of videos are viewed, and every minute, 20 hours of video uploaded to YouTube. So it's a big, large platform that's democratic. Anybody can upload their thoughts to the site. And almost from the beginning, news and political content has been very strong on YouTube, primarily because people find it to be a place where they can get messages out that might not be getting enough attention in the mainstream media, or might not be being heard by their leaders as effectively as they could be. Um, and climate change is often fit into both of those categories on YouTube. Um, we've seen a high school teacher upload a, a 10 minute lecture called the most terrifying video you'll ever see, uh, in which he outlines why we must do something about the climate crisis. It's been viewed seven and a half million times, and it's just a guy with a little marker and a whiteboard writing out a matrix of why we need to take action on climate change. Uh, there's a grandmother, she calls herself the Green Granny, and she gets on YouTube and she makes videos telling you how you can lower your environmental impact shop more efficiently and eliminate waste uh, in your home. Uh, and then this is really a global phenomenon. There's a group called the Indian Youth Climate Network uh, who went across India in 10 plug-in hybrid cars, visiting different Indian communities that were uh, dealing with the energy crisis in different ways, and then uploaded those videos to YouTube to spread awareness of what people are doing to, uh, to combat this crisis. So YouTube is a platform where a lot of people can get a lot of messages out there. Um, and this partnership that Google and YouTube have with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is taking that one step further. Basically, we're tapping into that large and vibrant online community where these issues are discussed and bringing those voices to the Climate Change Conference in Copenhagen this December so that the voices of average citizens are heard by leaders who are assembled there uh, ready to make change. So I think we're going to play a quick video uh, sort of outlining uh, the YouTube, uh, the, the feel of video, I think, around the, this, this impact, and then we'll, we'll t t say a few things about uh, how the campaign will work. Do we have sound? something that happens on YouTube a lot. Let me say just a few words about what's going to be taking place on YouTube in the Raise Your Voice campaign. Uh, you can find the site at youtube.com slash cop15. And starting today, any citizen around the world can upload a video uh, talking about climate change, how it impacts them, and what they think needs to be done. Uh, that'll last through October 30th. At that time, there will be a selection of finalists who will be voted on by the YouTube community and the top two video makers will actually get to go to Copenhagen uh, to spend time for about four days with the leaders assembled there, uh, have their voices uh, heard at the, the conference along with the voices of uh, the rest of the YouTube community who has supported them uh, in their video creation efforts. Uh, and then there's a phase two, and this is, I think, where it gets really exciting. Uh, YouTube users will be able to submit questions for leaders in Copenhagen about climate change, both in text and in video, and then vote on each other's text and video questions so that the best ones rise up to the top. And then in Copenhagen, these questions will be addressed in two ways. First, there's going to be an upload booth uh, at the COP15 conference where world leaders can come by, uh, see the questions that are being submitted, and answer them directly via YouTube channels. And then secondly, we're going to be hosting a televised debate with our broadcast partner, CNN, in which uh, some of the, the leading climate change experts who are there will answer questions in a live town hall forum uh, that we both broadcast uh, worldwide on CNN International and then also uh, live stream on YouTube. 
Uh, so we're very excited about this campaign. Uh, we're, we're, it's great to see the MFA taking really forward steps in this place. They're really committed to essentially making this the most transparent and open climate change conference in history. And we're really excited to give average citizens uh, a voice right alongside the world leaders in Copenhagen uh, this December. Also, just to clarify, if you want to find the Google Earth layers and tours mm. on climate change, go to www.google.com slash COP15.